My name is Florian. Welcome back to another video. Yay! Welcome back! So in today's video I want to show you just a little bit of my drawing process and for this time I just um, decided to do a video which is very raw and uncut so I don't have any time lapse in there, I don't have any cuts and jump to another drawing stage stage yeah stage okay um so i just want to show you the full process because some of you just asked about um how i do this step or how i do that step so i just want to show you a little bit more detailed what i do when i draw a portrait like this right here in the left corner I just place the reference photo right there for you to just check up what I do and maybe you draw along with me or you just keep watching me and enjoy this yeah this this drawing process Yes, and as you can see, I just start with some simple guiding lines, um, just like a horizontal and vertical line, which is inside a circle that just helps me a lot to find the perfect spot for each face feature, like the eyes, the nose and the lips. So. These lines are just helping me to find the right spot. I don't actually draw a realistic looking face this time. I just do a simple sketch, which is a little bit more stylized or a little bit, yeah, I don't know. It's like, it's like just a sketchy, sketchy stylized. Uh, portrait so I don't have to worry if the spot of both eyes or the lip is not that 100% correct but I want to have it to have it look right like when someone looks at this drawing like me looking in the mirror for example which is a very cool trick for you to um, yeah, to just have a neutral look at your drawing, just put them in the mirror. So if I want to uh, look at the drawing the first time, so I just want to make sure that I feel like, okay, this is looking quite good and it could be the person of the reference photo. So I just want to feel a little bit more free than usual when I draw. So. Um, I don't have to worry if anything of the details of the face is not that correct like on the reference photo, but yeah, so I just draw the um, the base the basic lines and the basic shapes which just is like an oval and a round circle and straight lines, so it's it's nothing really dramatic and um, yeah, abstract, but um, that helps me a lot to find the place, as I said. So when I think, when I'm at the stage where I think, okay, this could be the right spot for this face feature or for that one, like for the eyes or for the nose, I just start 
to get a little bit more detail but um, as you can see I don't draw any lashes of the eye at this stage um, okay here I got a rubber um, because sometimes I fail with the um, yeah with the proportion a little bit so sometimes I think it could be better so I redefine some little tiny details so yes I just lay down the uh, basic shapes and try to get a little bit more detailed on the face features so I try to um, to do it a little bit more exaggerated than I see it and um, then I observe it on the reference photo because uh, we don't want to represent any any photograph on the paper because I think if an artist just wanted to copy a photo that is totally unnecessary I guess so if you want a photo you take a photo and if you want to create a art which could be a little bit more stylized and um, yeah for example the lips could be a little bit more thicker or thinner and the head is a little bit more wider or something you can you can add something or you can add anything that you want into your art piece just because you are the artist and you can decide what you want to do on the paper or on the canvas or on whatever medium you are working on and this is this is the the best thing about being an artist it's like you have it in your own hands to do what you want and you decide when the artwork is like finish and and done at this point probably or maybe some people think okay there could be more details in there or it it's is that is that artwork or is that drawing finished yet and for me it's often like okay i could do add a little bit more details in it but it's not necessary to represent what I want to show so for me I just quit my drawing almost every time at about 85% um, so I don't want to overdo it so I just try to represent all the necessary things and leave all stuff out there which is not very important so the image is just what, yeah, what should I say? I hope you understand <laughs> what I mean. It's quite difficult to talk English um, for a long time like this. So, but um, yes, back, back on track. So I just um, try to, uh, yeah, to redefine lines and add some details but it's not that smooth and nice and um, clean in my drawing but that is kind of like my style of drawings like a little bit sketchy and this sketchy drawing method just allows me to add every time something into the drawing so I just don't have to worry about um, anything which I have left before and I want to add afterwards so I just keep my lines uh, rough and sketchy so I can go into the drawing um, when I almost finished it so this is like for me it's very important because the stage of a drawing or like the process of a drawing is not always the same I mean, you start drawing and you struggle sometimes with some um, proportions or with some lines. And if, if I feel uncomfortable at one spot of the drawing, I just switch the spot. 
So I think, okay, I stuck right here, for example, at, at the hair, what I draw right now. And I just try to um, pause this spot and go to another spot where I feel more comfortable with. So I just refresh my eyes and refresh my mind. So I have to focus on another spot of the drawing. And then some minutes later, I just come back at the spot where I stuck before. And maybe sometimes you are a little bit refreshed from another spot where you were drawing and you can fix the problems that you had earlier um, easy sometimes, yes. But that's the method that works for me very well. So yes, so I just um, come back <laughs> to the drawing right now. I just add the main shapes of the hair, which I just explained in my previous video, which was a drawing hair tutorial. Maybe some of you have seen it. Um, if not, you can just pause this video and click in to the previous tutorial if you want to learn more about drawing hairs. I just share my three favorite tips with you when it comes to draw hair, yes. This moment of drawing or this stage of the drawing is just my personal favorite stage of a portrait drawing. Just because I just have nailed all the proportions and I'm quite happy with it and I can add a little bit more detail. So I can start, I can basically start to draw the portrait at all. So for example, it is like um, when you look at a building, a architecture building, you, um, you can realize when all the iron stuff and all the concrete stuff is just built and you can uh, start to decorate inside. Like you can decorate and you can put wall covers on the walls and you can make it, you can make it beautiful. So this is the stage of the drawing right now. And I just love to work on that stage. Yeah, so as you can see, I just start with drawing the eyes in detail. So um, until now, I just had no um, iris inside my portrait drawing, which I added right now. And I just keep on working all around the eye. It just came to me like, I don't know, um, how should I say that? Uh, for a very long time, I just draw portraits and I realize every time when I start adding details on the eyes, I just start with the right eye. So it doesn't make sense to me anyhow, but um, I just start with the right eye and after I'm finished with like adding some details, I go on to the left eye, which means, okay, if I'm working on a paper and I'm still smudging all the, um, all the pencil lines in each other when I put my hand on the paper. So that doesn't make sense anyhow, but um, it's just the way I work. I don't think about that when I work on a portrait, I just keep on doing and I sometimes kind of like feel more comfortable with working on the right eye at first. So you see, I'm just working with the same pencil still, which is a H2 pencil, I guess when I look at the screen right now. Yes, I think it's a H2 pencil. Yes, you can see it right there. So. Um, 
I just use the same pencil, but I just try to put a little bit more pressure on the paper so I can draw a little bit darker for this stage of the drawing. So I don't um, change the pencil at this stage because I just want to have a match between my pre-sketch and the first details like this. So um, yeah, I just add a little bit shadows, not that much, but um, as much shadows as I need to know where the values of the eyes are and yeah, to add a little bit more contrast, something like that, yeah. Right, um, and I try to represent the um, eyebrows in a kind of like soft way, like it's, it's more like I don't draw all the hairs of the eyebrows at this stage or in this drawing at all. Um, I try to do a fading, which you can see on the right eye. Um, the eyebrow is the more it comes to the center of the head, it's a little bit more lighter. And the more the eyebrows goes to the edge of the head, which is on the right side, um, it's a little bit dark. So I try to do a, a fading from light to dark, um, which seems very beautiful to me. But this is my personal opinion, so you can draw. Um, eyebrows however you want so now I'm adding a little bit more shadows but just in a light way in order to know that the eyeball is is fixed in a hole like the head just has a hole where the eyes are and the iris and the eyeball is like stucking in inside this hole so this is the cause why the surrounding of the eyes is always a little bit darker than for example the uh, cheeks or something like that yes which is pretty cool inside um, this reference photo is like one hair uh, bundle like one wave is crossing the eye um, or better said is crossing the eyebrow and that seems like pretty pretty beautiful to me and that's that's um yeah i would say this is the cause why i choose this reference photo because i just like the drop shadow of the hair which is falling onto the to the jar um and makes it a little bit more three-dimensional yeah that's that's it <laughs> it's pretty hard to say something um, while I'm watching myself drawing right here on the screen after afterwards uh, because this is just a voiceover so I just want to say thank you to all the people who are just watching this until right now so it seems like you're about watching this video for 18 to 20 minutes right now and you're not bored which sounds great to me so if you are watching still right until this um until this spot so please comment anything about dinosaurs so if you are commenting anything about dinosaurs then i can see that you are watching this until minute number 19 which is pretty awesome so i'm just rubbing so many things on the nose i think the nose is just a tricky spot for this drawing because there is a piercing inside um, the nose which i kind of like really like for aesthetic points um, but in drawing, like for this, for this drawing, I just tried to draw the piercing 
uh, like the ring and then adding the nose which was probably the wrong method um, I just realized it and I cleaned it with my rubber and I um, started the nose for a new time and I decided to draw the holes of the nose at first and then adding the ring of the piercing afterwards and that makes a little bit more sense to me because the nose isn't quite simple to draw in a three-quarter perspective which this right here is um, and when there is a piercing um, it doesn't make it simple or more simple better said yeah so I just had a little struggle with my microphone but um, I'm back on track now so um, I'm just sitting right here in the living room and just commenting myself uh, yeah when I draw so excuse me for any interruption of kids screaming around the bell is ringing the church bell is ringing or something like that I I just wanted to make it as true as it is so I'm just sitting on a table drawing and afterwards just talking to you guys and yeah um, let you know what I think and what I do in my creative process so um, yeah um, I'm back again with drawing the lips so I just wanted to let you know that I have a tutorial which is based on how to draw lips so if you are struggling around drawing lips you can easily watch it um, afterwards this video or you click pause and click into the video and see how I do the lip drawing so this is it yes I'm just redefining the line of the jaw and the chin which should be um, very sharp and clean for myself just like you can draw it the way you want um, you can feel free to draw it in the style that you want but for me it's important that the three-quarter perspective is like um, sharp edged on the hair which is like the wave that covers the face on the left side and the jar and the chin uh, and the and the cheek line on the right side which is covering the hair which is behind the cheek yes these lines should be very defined and very clean so you can see that something is covered and there is something behind so this is the method that I'm working on on this on this spot right here and I do some more um, redefining of the hairlines um, just to make sure that I know where the waves of the hair are going along and if I yeah I can recognize if I have some bundles to um, to put them together or some single hairs to draw in between um, yeah that makes it a lot easier for me um, to realize and to see what I do and uh, which which details I have to add and which some details I probably leave leave away uh, because there is much information for the viewer of the image to recognize yes this is hair this is a wave this is a, a curled hair 
bundle um, which goes along this side or that side or yeah important at this point is like i said the area behind the chin and the cheeks um, is dark enough so because the hair which is falling down is covering the neck and the chin and the ear and all the stuff so it's dark inside the shadow and we want to represent that shadow uh, behind the head and between hair and neck yes so I'm just redefining still and as you can see on the reference photo the um, like the wave of the hair at the left side isn't that exaggerated in real but I decided to do a little bit more yeah a little more curve on the left side just to make sure that there is a nice wavy and flowy um, hairstyle yes that seems that seems to be pretty nice to me so when you're drawing something you don't draw the perfect photo you just design your image that's what it's all about I guess This is the reason why I just choose to to do the edge like what I'm drawing right now, like where the image ends on the bottom side. Um, it should look like a, like a figure out, made out of stone. Like you can see there is a straight cut inside, which seems pretty nice to me very often. Yes, and sometimes I just smudge my drawings a little bit, just like here, but in this case, it doesn't look nice. So I just take the rubber, cleaned it up, and um, decided to do no smudging at this drawing because I want it to look like sketchy or, yeah, I just want it to look like dirty and sketchy and sometimes um, these smooth dark areas just don't look great to me because I always like when I can see how the artist just worked on the image so this is basically what I just like when I'm just observing and watching artists or like art pieces from other artists and creative people. I just love to just stare at the image for minutes and just like, I don't know if it's on my mobile phone or on the tablet or on the computer, I just zoom into the image and I just try to understand how the artist just worked on the image that is that's for me like i just love to do that because it has so many learnings it has a huge learning effect to me when i just observe an image of another artist and see how he or she just worked like you can you can watch the one other um okay how should i say that um you can observe one image or like one masterpiece of a artist with different angles like probably you can um just for example you have something like michelangelo or caravaggio or some artist which is like he's living in the past and you can see the 
paintings in the museum. So you can go inside to the museum. That is actually what we did in art school back in the days when I learned my job as an artist. So we went into the museum and watched and just like observed the paintings of old masters with the topic of like um, for example mixing colors and we walked through the whole gallery like the museum and watched all these looked we just looked all these paintings on and try to understand how the color mixing um, is working like for the artist like artist number one just mixed the color this way other artist just mixing colors in another way and just used more dark colors other artists just use more bright colors and something like that so we just walked through and just observed all all the paintings with uh, the topic of mixing colors then afterwards we just like i don't know like two months later we just walked into the same museum and just were observing the same masterpieces like but we don't look at the colors this time we just look at let's say um yeah let's say perspective or maybe the golden spiral like if you know the golden spiral then you can just keep on watching if you don't know what the golden spiral is then you probably have to learn a lot about art and design and creativity so pause this video and google what um the golden the golden spiral is so go on so we just um <laughs> we just kept on going through the gallery and watched all the images and the art pieces of old masters with the topic of for example the golden spiral so we just walked through and if there is any landscape painting or a figure painting or something like that we just analyzed and watched it and observed it and try to make um yeah to, to scribble in our sketchbook what makes that piece look like to us like we just try to find out how the artist just worked with like perspective or with colors or and that is what i mean when i say you can observe a art piece of another artist for like minutes or probably hours just like by i don't know just watching like looking closely for example a drawing of a artist that you admire you can just focus on the line work you can just focus on watching how the shading is done or probably if 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 this is a cartoon artist or something you can see okay how how does the artist represent something in the easiest way which is comic i guess so um when you're drawing cartoon or comic you just have to focus on what is very very important and leave all the stuff outside because you don't want any details in cartoonish style drawing you just want to focus on the main things and that is pretty different to a artist which is drawing like hyper realistic so i think it's pretty nice that art or better said it's it's pretty nice that everything is possible in art no matter which language no matter which religion you are from or something like that you you just can do anything at any time with 
not a lot of materials just like me drawing like for about 40 minutes um, just with a pencil on a single sheet of white paper I mean how simple can life be and everything that you do or that you create on the paper or that you create in your mind you just learn by yourself you try something or maybe you try something new and you fail at the moment and you're gonna do it over and over again and you repeat it and you try to don't repeat the mistakes that you've done in the past so that is what visual development is on paper for example or on the canvas or whatever medium you are working with so it's all about and that is what is really really important when i work as a full-time artist and i sell my works like i paint on walls for money that is basically my job and most of the time people don't understand why the price of a painting on the wall is is so expensive um, and I always say it's not the material that you pay for me when I work on your wall like when I'm talking to a client like I just work on the wall and you don't pay the material for me I mean the price isn't that much because of the material the price of the painting on the wall is just because of me because I just earned a lot of experience and I've had many years in progress and learning to draw or to paint and you are paying my experiences and not my brush or my paint or something like that okay I mean you don't get brushes and paint like acrylic paint or oil paint for free it costs what it costs but the main point is the experience that a artist has like over the years like earned and this is golden like I mean you can do crazy things on a white sheet of paper for sure for sure i i think what i do right here is just like basic but when i watch other artists doing this like a full tutorial of a drawing it just blows my mind because other artists just work in another way which i didn't knew before or which I've never tested and that just blows my mind and I'm and I'm like always open for new experiences and new learnings and um, yeah new new testings to myself so that is pretty pretty nice to me and that is what makes art so um, important to me yeah learning things and and learning and teach myself yeah so we are about at minute 38 right now and if you are still watching this until now and you don't skip or didn't skip anything then this is a big shout out to you and i just want to say thank you 